In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grout stone veneer. And if you're not sure what grouting is, it's where you put the mortar in between the joints of each piece of stone veneer. And my name's Josh, and this channel is all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. I like for my grout to have a darker color, so I'm gonna use this product by Cy Creek, and this is the charcoal cement color. And I'm gonna mix this up in a five gallon bottle bucket and let me show you how I like to do it. The most important thing to grouting the stone veneer is to keep everything consistent so the mixture I'm going to show you on how to do and the mixture for the coloring all needs to be kept exactly the same throughout the entire job. So if we look inside this container as you can see this stuff is more or less just a simple powder. Now I already mixed this up the other day so what I like to do is fill a five gallon bucket all the way up and then I'll take three scoops of this and put into the water and then I use the water in the same amount in each mixture or each batch of grout when I mix it up. And after I have my three tablespoons in the water and again I already mixed this the other day but then I make sure I stir this up really well each time I use this water for the mortar. Here are all the items I'm going to need to mix up the mortar for the grouting. As you can see I got some clean sand here. Now you want to make sure you use the same batch of sand throughout the whole job. Type S cement for the mortar. The water that we mix up with the color in it for the color that you want. A empty five gallon bucket. A half inch drill with a mixing blade on it. This is dirty water to clean off the mixing blade. And this is a five quart bucket. And the reason why I gotta use a five quart bucket when we measure out the sand and the cements because you wanna keep the ratios exact. So it's unlike when we mixed up the mortar for the stone veneer, where we just used a shovel, this needs to be more precise. So I'll always use a five quart bucket. And then I use a solo cup for measuring out the exact amount of water because depending on how many cups of water you put in is how much darker or lighter the mortar is going to be for your grout. I'm going to first begin by taking two buckets of sand and putting in the mixing bucket and then one bucket of the mortar into here. So it's a two to one ratio. If you are interested in purchasing any of the products used in this video, be sure to check out the description below for the links. I'm now going to go ahead and put my mixing blade into the mixture. And then I'm going to scoop out seven solo cups of the colored water. Now we're going to take the half inch drill with the blade on it and mix it up really well. If you do not have a half inch drill and a mixing blade, you can simply just use a hoe and a wheelbarrow and mix it up that way. So unlike when you mix up the mortar for the stone veneer, this is going to be a little more soupy. And that's what you want because it's much easier to come out of the grout bag when it's a little more soupy. Now that that's mixed up really well, it's time to install it onto the wall. I got what's called a grout bag here, and these are just like a cake icing bag to where you're gonna fill it up with the mortar, and then you're gonna squeeze it out just like cake icing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a soil scooper. I have found a soil scooper is much easier to get it into this bag with instead of using a conventional trowel. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop just about five scoops into this bag or so, something comfortable and easy to manage because you don't want to overfill this bag and it's a pain to control. So something about like this. And after you get your mortar into the bag, you're going to go ahead and just squeeze the air out of it like so. And then we're going to twist it. And as you can see, the mortar squeezes right out and we're going to fill in all those cracks around the whole wall. And it is a lot of cracks, but doesn't take too long once you get rolling with it. Let's go do it. Already got started at the top of this wall and came down so you can see it easier with the camera. So as you can see, all these cracks are going to get filled in. And again, just use it just like you do cake icing. We're just going to put it up tight into the joint and just squeeze it in to make sure it filled all the cracks. And always wear some kind of safety glasses or sunglasses because sometimes air can get into it kind of like it did there and blow out and then splatter in your eyes. So I always wear some kind of eye protection. So again, just push it in and just squeeze and fill the cracks. It's really not that complicated, but after you do it for about 10, 15 minutes, it'll get easier as you go if you haven't done it before. And then once you push some out, you gotta re-tighten up the bag like so. And now keep on squeezing it into the joints. 
If you notice the mortar is not flowing out of the grout bag like you would like it to, you can cut the end of it off and make it a little bit bigger so it comes out a little bit wider. And it depends on what look you're looking for. I like to have the grout recessed into the stone. Some people like an over grout joint where the grout will actually come out over the stone. I don't like that. That's kind of the old world look. I like the new world look. So something like this. Just so you can see a little closer, again, put the tip of the bag right into the joint just squeeze it right in there and fill all the void and you'll notice because it's thinner it comes right out of the bag if you mix this mortar up too thick it'd be very difficult to push it out of the bag so again consistency of the mixture or viscosity is very important and you want to try to avoid getting any of it on the face of the stone veneer in areas with larger gaps such as where multiple stones intersect you're going to notice you're going to have to slightly overfill those because once you start packing it into the gap, it's going to take up more than the other gaps. This grouting has been sitting for about an hour. You want to make sure it sets up enough to where you can press in on it and leave more or less a thumbprint. And if it's too wet, you're going to give it a kind of a smooth finish. And I don't like that finish. I like to give it more of a grainy look. So it all depends on what you want, but I usually give it about an hour and it depends on the humidity. Sometimes the moisture will go off it much quicker than that. So in order to give it the finish that I want, I just use a three inch brush. And the main thing about this is we wanna make sure moisture or any kind of precipitation like rain or ice doesn't get back into the cracks of the stone veneer and the grouting. So the best thing to do is just start out by taking your hand and pressing it tight into that joint, about like that. And you're first gonna use just your hand to go through and use a glove with a uh, rubberized end on it like this. That's what I usually use. And you're just gonna take your hand and kind of just pack it into that joint like so. So this is the beginning of the finishing process. I do typically work from the top down. So as you can see, it's filling in right up against that stone veneer. So that way it's nice and more or less watertight, but you still want to be cautious of water getting in behind here. And that's why we put the felt on the wall in case something does, it doesn't go onto the actual wood wall. All right, so after you went ahead and knocked the loose edges down and you packed it in tight in a joint, now I take my brush and I just give it a quick smack right into that joint as well something like that and then just real quickly i just kind of wipe it off right like so and if you sit there and keep going across it it's going to bring out more moisture out of that mortar and it's going to give it a again a more smoother look but again i just want to hit real quick like that and that's the only thing i do to give mine a finish and again, if you do the over grout joint, you may just lightly knock the rough edges off and that's it. It all depends on the look you are looking for. I want to show you up close one more time. Again, we're just going to pack it in that joint and kind of smooth it out with your finger like so. No matter which technique you use, just be sure that you get the mortar tight around the stone. Next, we're going to tap it in like so. And now we're just going to lightly go over it like that. And that's all there is to making the finish in the grout joint. If you have a big project similar to the one I'm doing here, using your hand like this can wear you out. Something that you may want to try is using an old cut off broomstick with a sharpened end to help point everything in around those stones. Something I would strongly recommend you do, especially if you're working by yourself, is try to do one whole section of a wall at one time and then before you start on another side, be sure you get it all done because you don't want to come down, stop halfway, then resume the next day because you're going to see different shades more than likely if you do do that in the grouting. You want to try to keep everything as uniform as possible. So as you can see here, I stopped here in this corner. So when I resume the next day on this side of the wall, you're not gonna be able to see the shade difference nearly as much if there is any. And nine times out of 10, it won't ever look exactly the same on the different day. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna show you an example of me doing this in real time while I have somebody else recording me. So as you can see here, you can go pretty quick once you get rolling with it. And also, I'd like to point out that this grout's a little more wet than typically you would have it, but 
it's no big deal you just let it sit up a little longer if you do get any of the grout on the stone veneer all you got to do is take a water bottle and spray it off while it's wet and then once it dries just wipe it off one more time with a damp sponge and then it's going to be nice and clean since this is part three of a three-part series i've done everything from the scratch coat to putting the stone veneer on the wall and also putting the grouting on in this video so if you have not yet seen part one and two be sure to check out the cards in the top right hand corner of the screen and click on them if you want to watch the video. But as you can see this is the final product and it turned out really nice. And if you take your time you're going to get the same type of outcome here. And I always run mine up to the peak like you just seen. Some people don't do that. But around these windows I'm going to actually just caulk this with some kind of neoprene caulk or even quad. Something that's going to withstand the elements over time. And right here along the bottom, I'm also going to run a nice little bead. And these grout joints right here at the windowsill, I'm going to go over those one more time with a damp sponge once it's dry because it does stain the sill after you do put it in there. So you do need to clean that up one more time. But that's the final product here. And over here is the garage. This is where the water spigot's coming out of the house. And I could have got a special trim for that, but I just like the look of it right up against the stone. And then up here is where the lights are going to be coming out at. I do like to use the stone electrical boxes here. And if you take a look around the side of the garage door, I just have the standard colonial trim going right up to the stone. And I may or may not caulk this also. It really doesn't need it per se. But I know around that window you definitely should. But around this door, it's probably not an issue. And then this is up the other side of the garage bump out and it runs right up into the gable just like the other side of the house so i had two bump outs i had to do which was a lot of work and down here along the bottom around the foundation i also just ran the stone right onto the block foundation and then just grouted around it like normal and as you can see it turned out really well and this is a good illustration of how the stone actually elevates and does not set on anything to hold it it just sticks right to the wall and i left a little space out right here for the steps and this is going to be a four foot step just so you're aware this section has been drying for about five days as you can see the longer it dries the lighter it gets so keep that in mind when you're mixing up the color into your grout and if you want to see how to build a whole stone veneer fireplace check out this video it'll help you out